very hard couple of talks to follow, so bear with me. Um, good day, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be sharing with you some insights gained from building BioSeq, which is a Canadian SARS coronavirus through sequencing repository. And the main takeaway here is to embrace reusable software design, uh, which is forward thinking mindset that prepares teams to handle unexpected obstacles. But before I forget, uh, my name is Justin. I'm a software engineer, and I'm proud to work with a team of brilliant people at Ontario Institute for Cancer Research. How do I switch next screen? There we go. Um, OK, this is not switching over. That's great. Sorry. Biosig's story starts when COVID-19 was declared a pandemic, and Genome Canada, through their Cancogene program, called out for ideas. Uh, so leveraging years of making data exploration tools, our team created a portal uh, for researchers and clinicians to follow the evolution of the virus. Uh, with a constant growing infection and loads of sequencing data basically piling up, there was a clear urgency to ship it as soon as possible. Spoiler alert, like Melanie mentioned, uh, we launched in four weeks precisely thanks to our reusable designs. Uh, not too shabby, right? Uh, let's switch over. This thing is not working well, sorry. Anyway. Um, when the project kicked off, uh, we had already made Overture, a suite of reusable apps that was great at cancer stuff, but the viral data model was quite different. Uh, so we were not ready. And we had also designed Overture to handle massive files along with clinical info and other metadata. But again, the viral sequences came in what was basically several thousands of tiny records in a couple files. Why is this not moving forward? Uh, it was supposed to be automated and animation. I'm sorry, people. That, that, don't, don't worry about it. Thank you. Don't worry. It's just not going into presentation mode. Thank you. So where was I? Mm -hmm. Anyway, the fact that there was a whole bunch of tiny little files was a brand new processing and performance requirement for us. I've only got five minutes here, so cancer versus viruses, yada, 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 you, you get the idea. So we found a few other challenges in different areas, but let's focus on the data submission part for now because time, right? Um, so much like this presentation, time was of the essence. So we chose to create a custom layer on top of Overture to mitigate the gaps that may have otherwise needed dramatic changes in our code base. Uh, fortunately, when it came to data exploration, Arranger's data agnostic design uh, was already nearly ideal. So we also wanted to provide a UI for submission, and thankfully, Stage was ready to house that, house that too. Uh, after some like pixel pushing, we got the front end covered. Now we could only focus entirely on the back end, creating Muse to help both song and score support the viral sequence data. Um, with Muse doing most of the viral model heavy lifting, uh, that meant validating metadata, um, matching it to their corresponding sequence and chunking these into the separate individu individual records. All we needed to change for song and score was turning on pagination and just calling them or scaling them horizontally. Easy. With some DevOps work, they, they could now handle thousands of concurrent requests. Naturally, I'm oversimplifying the process here for the sake of time. Uh, but that pretty much did it. Uh, in summary, what, here's what we learned. First and foremost, do not hard code your data models. It's always a pain to change those later. Um, second, ensure your interfaces share a clear and uniform standard. This helps integrate new apps. Uh, third, straight and simple. The more microservice does, the less reusable it is. Fourth, don't hard code rigid uh, behavior. It makes it hard to deploy in different environments and scale it up or down, whatever. And last but not least, document decisions as you go, along with any known technical debt. This will help yourselves and future hires figure out what you did and more importantly, why. 
Um, these days working on PCGL, our team is adamant about these lessons we learned and we're making sure that we design everything with reusability in mind and from the very start. Um, these are the wonderful humans I work with and though they're not shown here, we also massive credit to the alumni who work hard on this project. And we're truly grateful as well to all who have guided and funded or contributed to VirusX, such as doctors Guillaume Bork, Fiona Brinkman, William Xiao, Jan Jolie, and of course the open source community overall. And time. Thank you. Thank you.